Welcome back folks, it is Jafer and today we're going to take a look at SteelSeries latest offering. It is a more budget friendly offering, the Rival 5. Now SteelSeries has been pretty hit and miss with me on mice as of late and as of late I'd say a while now. So let's take a look and see if this is worth your time. Measuring in at 128 millimeters long, 58 millimeters where you're going to grip it at its width and it flares out to 63 millimeters. You're looking at a height of 41 millimeters. It's long but definitely a safe ergo shape. It honestly kind of reminds me of a Corsair mouse a little bit with its aggressive line work throughout and it being a larger mouse. There's definitely no extreme curves or bends with the Rival 5. It's got a comfortable contour right here for your thumb. So that way you do have a little bit of a, I don't want to say a resting point, but it definitely fits nicely in there. And then on the right hand side, you do have a very safe slope, nothing aggressive as it flares out here and then kind of rolls right off. Uh, it's definitely comfortable on the ring and pinky finger. Now the hump does allow you to use any grip style if you have the hand size to wrap around that 128 millimeter body with a hand size of 19 by 10. I can go with either option but definitely felt most comfortable with that fingertip grip or in a more relaxed palm. I normally claw but uh, there seems to be a difference in tension when I am clicking up top here closer toward the body as opposed to when I'm fingertip or palming and I'm clicking toward the front of mouse one and two. Structurally to me SteelSeries is always built really solid mice. No creaking, no rattling. There are zero rubberized sides on this. This is all completely made of texturized ABS plastic. And that's a good thing because SteelSeries has had issues in the past with rubberized sides peeling off over time. Now that surface of that textured ABS does feel nice and it's not overly textured. It definitely is smoother than your razor mice, um, but it's there and apparent. And with that textured surface, it does accumulate a little bit of your oil or skin residue. So keep in mind, if that's something that does bother you a lot, you'll have to clean it off. But this is nothing dramatic like say a glossy mouse or anything like that. And of course, with this large size, this does come in at 85 grams. When I saw it as a selling point, you know, it's not really that big of a concern to me because I understand that not everyone out there is looking for a super lightweight mouse. And generally speaking, in most cases, a lightweight mouse is going to be a little bit more costly. And now manufacturers have done a good job on making sure that our lightweight mouse options are being more affordable. Uh, and while this one is definitely affordable, I wouldn't consider it in that lightweight bracket at 85 grams if we're looking at the competition that's out there in 2021. Now the side buttons on the Rival 5 is going to be the big claim to fame here that's going to set it different or set it apart from SteelSeries other offerings unless you're still rocking the old Rival 500. This does have multiple buttons on here and that side button cluster is going to look a little reminiscent to something like a Razer Basilisk mouse and one thing that does set this extremely apart from its competition is going to be that this top button here is actually a rocker. So it's not going to be something that you're just going to actuate by pressing in. You're actually going to press up or press down and that's going to offer you two additional functions or bindings of your choosing whether you're using it for regular computer work or for gaming. Now I have a lot of issues with this whole setup here. And I think that it sounded and looked really good on paper, but it's poorly executed for a number of reasons. One being that the trigger silver button here, unless you're actually in a palm or you're going to be using a claw, at least from my hand size, I cannot use this. Now on the Razor offerings, you do have the option to replace this with a pedal on the basilisk and that is awesome because that gives you a little bit more customization depending on your hand size and if you even want to use it or not. That's not the case with this. It's it's there, it's part of the mouse, you can't customize it and unfortunately I can't really use it at all if I'm going to be in a fingertip grip because this is really how I'm going to be positioning a fingertip. So I have to go out of my way and basically push the mouse into my palm in order to use this. So if you're going to be using this, make it for something like an action in game that you're not gonna use it often. 
And the second issue that I have with this is going to be the actual actuation of these buttons. Uh, not only is a rocker stiff as if your father asked you to go down into the basement and flip the fuse box because that's how stiff it is, but even the standardized side buttons here, they just feel and sound extremely cheap. I guess the good and bad thing about this is that there is no pre and post travel because these things are like a 1970s light switch. They are either on or off and they're just very hard and not crisp at all. It feels like I'm just clicking two pieces of plastic together. With the Rival 5 having that toggle, I understand what they mean like on their website where you can actually hit up or down to help. Uh, key bind your bills within Fortnite or throw grenades, etc. Unfortunately, these are so stiff and they just feel so cheap that I don't see how anyone at any play level or skill level is going to use this for something like an action of building where you're going to be flipping back and forth and it's going to require the mouse to really keep up with your thumb movement and this is just not it. Now when you add up the cluster of the side buttons as well as mouse one and two, the scroll wheel and the DPI button, we're looking at a total of nine buttons that are available on the Rival 5. Underneath mouse one and two, it's going to be the TTC golden switches. And these are gonna be rated for 80 million clicks with an IP54 rating. Uh, they are firm, they feel great, and they have a crispy sound to them. I was a fan of these on other mice and still am, such as the Aerox 3. The scroll wheel is going to be your standard steel series offering as it sits very low inside of that body. I do like a nice low profile scroll wheel with some nice tactility in its steps, but they are light. And on the side here, I don't know what switches are on the side, sadly, but let's go ahead and give you a sound test. The cable is good, not great. Now I could be wrong, but it really feels like the same super mesh cable found on the wired Aerox 3. It's flexible in 2019 standards, but coming into the middle of 2021, SteelSeries definitely needs to do better. And I can't give them the excuse that this is a budget mouse, so it's gonna have a budget cable. Uh, we have seen other mice out there around this price range or even at the same exact price range with a much better cable. Underneath, we do have 100% PTFE feet, and these are dyed black, but there's no reason for me to claim that SteelSeries is lying in any way, but they're definitely not gonna be something of any special treatment, such as heat treated or zero adjective or anything like that. Uh, they do glide well though, and the taper on them is really nice. I didn't notice any scratching or anything like that or any hangups on any surfaces that I did use. Now SteelSeries has always used their own proprietary sensors. It's no different here with the Rival 5 using the True Move Air. I had no issues with this sensor at all. I didn't experience any deviation or any liftoff uh, issues, but I will say that liftoff distance, while it felt low, sadly you can't adjust it within the SteelSeries engine. Now what you can customize though is going to be the DPI settings, they call it the CPI, as well as your angle snapping, your pulling rate, your key binds, and of course that RGB. Overall, my experience with the Rival 5 was fine, nothing memorable sadly. I'm really waiting for SteelSeries to kind of give us that knockout one-two punch of a mouse. And while I went going into this knowing it's going to be for that casual gamer out there, this is definitely not something for any experienced PC gamer that is a veteran or super competitive. I still feel at $60, even the casual market deserves to have a fantastic mouse. And I don't think this is it, sadly. Some improvements I'd like to see if they were to revise this in another iteration is I would like to see them address the whole side button feature they have here because you have to understand that they need to be able to make this uh, adjustable just like Razer did with their Basilisk as well as give us actual switches that don't feel as bad as they do in this. The internals are top notch, but I feel overall it was slightly over engineered for my liking. And even as an MMO player though, I still do appreciate Still Series releasing this for the sake of making sure that we have more mice on the market for more buttons, but this one is unfortunately a swing and a miss. 
So yeah, if that wasn't clear, not a fan of the Rival 5. I don't know what the folks at Steel Series is seeing that no one else seemed to be seeing as we don't seem to be on the same page as far as what we're looking for in a mouse, whether it is a budget-friendly option or a high-performance option. We just want a really good mouse, and I don't think we've been seeing that from Steel Series for quite some time now. Hopefully that changes soon enough with some recent leaks. So keep an eye on the channel for a review on that, and you'll definitely get notified if you do hit that subscription button below and if you like the video please throw a like until next time i am jafer i appreciate your time stay safe